so system configuration some boot scripts to install so we go back to the sources and tar minus xvf lfs boot scripts cd lfs boot scripts and we just run make install so that's that one done There's um, a chapter there about device and module handling um, for a bog standard uh, installation you won't need to do anything with this or very unlikely to unless you've got something specialised like two CD-ROMs or two sound cards or such like. So now we've got a configuration file for the network so if we just copy that in and then edit it and the default the kernel we're going to install is the one from Raspberry Pi and it defaults the ethernet to .eth0 so it hasn't got one of the more modern um, names so what's in the book is adequate here you need to give yourself an IP address that is on your network ensure your gateway is correct as well as the broadcast um, IP address and the rest shouldn't need to be changed uh, resolve.conf let's edit that one um, domain if you haven't got a domain you can actually delete this line I've got one called mynet.org name server um, it suggests a couple of name servers there there are others from Cloudflare which are free and supposedly privacy orientated where they promise not to store any of the searches um, there's one from OpenDNS as well so the, the Google one's not the only one there are other other free ones available I've got my own one that I run so I'll be using that um, and I'll just use that one host name so echo a string to that uh, file so let's for example be inventive and call this RPI 400 uh, let's do that in lowercase actually and then we want to modify the host file so if we create that and modify it so here you can see you've got to um, modify this to state the local host and local domain uh, sorry this one here fully qualified domain name so in my case I've called it RPI 400 Oops. let's start that again yep so delete that insert rpi 400 the domain I'm using is mynet.org and then all I've got to do is modify the host name which of course is just rpi 400 and then here I need to add in my IP address that I allocated previously in the um, ifconfig file so it's 200 I'm using again the fully qualified domain name rpi400.mynet.org and the host name which is rpi400 and then any other aliases you might want to call this machine which I don't want to do I'm going to delete these lines because I don't use IPv6 and that should be the end of that file so here's a sysv init file for startup to get us some um, consoles 
so we can log in so I'll just copy and paste that You'll notice the first console has got this no clear switch and that means that when you boot you still get the output of all the scripts that have run in case there's any problems with them um, without that the screen will clear and you'll just get the prompts at the top of the screen so if you were to switch one of these other teletypes one of these other terminals you'll see um, just the prompts at the top of the screen so next thing we've got is the uh, clock to configure um, by the way read all of this it's uh, useful stuff to know uh, all part of the learning again um, just skipping past it to get to the important bits this is config clock so let's now edit this UTC1 what does it say about that set it to zero if the hardware clock is not set to UTC so that might be if you're sharing the computer windows for example which stores the time in local time it's Raspberry Pi very unlikely you're going to be sharing it with anything else so you can leave that at one clock params um, Yeah, I don't think I ever used that at all, but um looks like there's a help file there if you do need. You find there's problems with time zones and so on. Um, if you need help. Configuring, configuring the Linux console. So let's edit this. We'll create this file. Um, and we'll edit it now. Sysconfig console. Uh, one thing you do want to add here is the log level and set that to 3 it's a reasonable amount if you don't you'll get um, kernel messages popping up over the screen um, but log level 3 is a, a good uh, a reasonable level to have uh, key mac now I need to uh, crib off one of my machines here because I can never remember what these settings are so while that boots, uh, we'll just check if there's anything else to edit here. This rc.site file, um, you don't need to copy and paste this in, it's just reproduced here. This is the default how it'll appear um, on the uh, on the disk. Uh, instead, I've just noticed the log level is defined here as well, so you could change un uncomment that and put the log level in there if you wished. Um, I don't know which file will take preference. Um, I've never noticed that before, but that's probably because I've, I've looked through this before years ago and there's never anything really to change there. The, the defaults are fine as they are. So let's go on to the bash shell startup files and I'll just see if my LFS box has come up. Right, it's just booting. It's an old Pentium Pro, so it's going to take a little while longer. Um, basically, what you need to do here is to select a key map that is appropriate to the key board that you're using. So this looks like a Polish one that's here. So I don't need that. It wouldn't be any use to me. Um, the one that I need, right, I'm in here now. So let's get it up. Right, yeah, the one I need is UK here, so it's a bit confusing. Sometimes it's GB, sometimes it's UK, and sometimes UK means Ukraine. So it's, um, that's, I think that's why I always get thrown by the settings here. Um, the fonts I use are LAT2-16, and for a Western Europe, um, the encoding I use is 88591. So that's the settings I use. You'll have to investigate yourself what's appropriate. As you saw, there were examples on the web page. Next, we run this locale minus A, and it shows us all the locales that are installed. You might recognize these as what we installed when we 
um, had finished installing glibc and were configuring it. So the two that I need to install are these two here and I'll be selecting the top one as my default and to find out what string I need to use I do this command here paste that in and then I paste in, you can see it's at the bottom there then I paste in the string that I want to use which is that one and type in locale oops, locale char map as it's got there and you can see that it's come back with a string and this is a string that I need to um, enter in the next configuration and in fact the example is for ENGB at, uh, ISO 88591 uh, and the string is what I need to insert here so if I copy this in take a copy of this and then edit that file that we've just created in ETC profile and I want to modify this. So LL is the language, um, CC is like the country. So I want to get rid of all this. There's no char map or modifiers. Um, don't think, let me just check that. I can't find where that is now. Um, when you build BLFS, all this changes and gets put into different files because um, there's a more elaborate config system. Um, oh, of course, yes, it's the. I've done this wrong. Um, I need to put in the. That is the char map that's on the screen. I need to put in en for the language uh, underscore gb as the country and then the dot and then that last bit that we copied is the character map, the char map so that's how, or something how, how the um, parameters should look so it may be ENUS ISO 8859 if you're in America uh, and so on so save that now we go and create an input RC file Copy all of that, paste that in. There's no changes needed to be made, needed to be made there. Now create a shells file which lists all the available shells on the system. So obviously bin sh is just a sim link, but it's still a shell that can be executed. And we then go on to making the LFS, LFS system bootable. <coughs> 